you got to be able to recognize when the universe or the world gives you opportunities. Mm -hmm. The story doesn't have to play out the way you think it does. It just has to end the way it's supposed to. Before St. John would become one of the most unique new artists with his genre-bending sound and honest lyrics, before he would write songs for Division, Usher, Jadena, and collab with Lil Baby for his most recent single, Trap, before St. John would have over 134,000 subscribers on YouTube and over 172K followers on Instagram, and before hip-hop legend Kareem Biggs Burke would make his return to the music business after close to a 15-year hiatus just to sign St. John to a management deal off of pure belief in his talent alone. St. John's rise in the rap game was not a traditional path. In fact, he started behind the scenes as a songwriter before ever getting noticed for his skills on the mic. And even his behind the scenes process took a long time. He spent two months writing for Rihanna and not one of his songs was used. In between that, he dabbled in hotel management and even modeling. Can you guess which major brand he modeled for? Stick around until the end of the video to find out. But St. John built himself up and found a way into the mainstream through his own voice, and like he wrote on Facebook back in 2010, progress is a slow process, but I ain't got nothing but time. This is the story of St. John. What's going on, good people in the comments section? I hope you're having one heck of a day. My name is Jeremy Hecht, here for you today on Before They Were Famous, as we take you through the life and career of St. John, Pride of Fame. And this is the show where we document the journey of your favorite entertainers in hopes of inspiring you and showing you that you can reach your goals too. If you're new here, I'm the LA host for this channel, so good to meet you. Somebody called me Jeremy Corny Jokes Hecked in a comment, but they said they were getting used to me, so I'll take it. And if you're familiar, then you know I've covered other artists for this channel, like Lil TJ and Polo G, so be sure to check those out after you finish watching this one. Also, let us know who to cover next in the comments down below. Now, let's get into it. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! I'm the ghetto Martha Stewart. Carlos St. John was born in Brooklyn, New York, and is of Guyanese descent, even splitting his time in three-year intervals between Brooklyn and Georgetown, Guyana, where he lived with his dad. He doesn't talk about his age because he believes it's only a concept, so in other words, he still hasn't said how old he is, but I did some digging and I actually found out his birthday. I won't go against his wishes, I'll just say he's not 40, but he's also not 20. All right, in Guyana, he didn't grow up with much, but he says he was unaware of his poor circumstances. He would run around the neighborhood barefoot and bathe in the rain. At seven or eight years old, he was even driving around on his father's motorcycle scooter to get around. As for his home in Brooklyn. I grew up between two project buildings. My mom would make sure that we wouldn't live in the projects because for her, that was the absolute bottom. Yeah. For her, that meant we'd never make it out because it's a system that sort of entraps you. So she moved us a block away from the projects. His mother later became a minister having her own church, but when Carlos was a child, she worked as a nurse's aide and wasn't making much money. She couldn't afford to keep him and his siblings around, so she would send them back and forth to live with their father every three years. His mother always made him read a lot of books growing up, so he was always very good with words. She would also listen to church music, but it wasn't what John wanted to hear. He also grew up listening to a lot of Caribbean music, later getting into Jay-Z during the Volume 3 era while living in Guyana. And that was the album that changed his perspective on a lot of things. The first show he ever saw live was Supercat and Beanie Man in Guyana, which he can still vividly imagine to this day. But when he was 12 years old, he was inspired by his older brother to begin creating music. His older brother would rap in their neighborhood to his friends, and after Carlos saw what his big bro could do with words, he knew he had to try it out for himself. He told XXL, my brother was the only older representative as a male, so if he was a rapper, I was a rapper. If he was a fisherman, I was a fisherman. If he was a cop, I was a cop. I just followed him down any dark path. I came home one day and I saw him rapping in the corner of a cypher. I didn't even know what a cypher was. And that was it. In junior high, he would literally just rap his brother's bars. The middle school kids thought he was a genius because of how clever they were. Ironic that he started off rapping someone else's words and gradually became the dude who wrote verses for other people, but we'll get into that. Carlos realized that he should probably start writing his own lyrics, plus he moved back to Guyana and his brother stayed in New York, so he didn't have a new supply of his bro's raps. So he sat down and wrote his first song during his freshman year of high school while living in Guyana. At first, he was actually writing and recording using his given name of Carlos St. John. And while illegal activity was surrounding him in Brooklyn and was even in his family, Carlos stayed away from a life of hustling. He told the fader, I tried my hand at it, but I didn't like it. It didn't quite fit me the same. My teeth are too straight, my skin is too smooth. It just didn't work for me the same way. But for everyone around me, that's what was normal. In terms of actual jobs, he was a manager of a hotel at one point. But after his freshman year, Carlos moved back to Brooklyn and attended high school there. You don't got no rules and you just, you're wild. These animals in New York. Mm. It just breeds a lot of 
it just breeds that type of intention, that yeah. like intensity in people. So I was in high school wilding. In 2010, he dropped the St. John Portfolio as well as a new song every week for eight straight weeks that became the In Association mixtape using his real name. He was also calling himself the Black James Bond at the time. He described his early sound as angry and much less musical than his current stuff. Some of his music even got early placements on Hip Hop DX and Pigeons and Planes. There was one song he made to send over to his friend and only uploaded the demo version on SoundCloud to show him, but when he refreshed the page, the song had a couple hundred plays. I'm like, wait, he must really like this. He played this a couple hundred times <laughs> in the last 10 minutes. I was like, wait, that math doesn't add up. I didn't click private on the link, so unintentionally I released it. His song made its way to the ears of BMG music exec Zach Katz, who flew Carlos out to LA to meet. He loved his writing style and thought that he could be a good fit as a songwriter for some of his artists. Zach asked John a question with a serious look on his face. He said, do you want to rap or do you want to make a million dollars? Carlos answered with the latter and Katz put him to work writing for his artists. One of them being none other than Bad Gal Riri. So Carlos wrote songs for Rihanna for two straight months in hopes of catching his big break as a writer. But unfortunately, not even one of his songs was accepted. He returned home empty handed and no further along in his career. But his first real break would come after co-writing the song No Interruption for rapper Hoodie Allen, who if you don't know who he is, I've gotten it my whole life, everyone says that we look alike. Actually, one time I went to a Hoodie Allen concert in Minneapolis and someone saw me in a Chipotle and thought I was him. Do you guys think we look alike? Are people making this up? All the editors put up a side by side. Anyways, No Interruption debuted at number 10 on the Billboard 200 chart, and the song currently has over 35 million views on YouTube. That kickstarted a career in songwriting for Carlos, who wrote songs for other big name artists. His first major mainstream artist credit was for Usher on the songs Crash and Rivals for his album Hard to Love. On songwriting, he told Hip Hop DX, I started out making music for myself and I fell into songwriting. I took the opportunity because I wanted to see what it was like to be selfless. You never get to a place where you're completely selfless because you're introducing your story to someone and then you're giving up the voice to sing. But he still felt a void in his purpose. Writing for other people allowed him a shot, but it didn't allow him the same opportunity to put his all into the work. He couldn't give the same intensity and emotion to someone else's songs as he would be able to do for his own. After pitching his work to more than 40 artists as demo songs, managers and A&Rs would all come back to him telling him the same thing. I can't pitch this to my artist, it sounds like you. But that's when John knew that he had stumbled upon his sound. So in 2016, Carlos released his first song under the new rap moniker St. John, titled 1999. He shot a video for the song in Coney Island and the eerie instrumental mix with the distorted vocals delivered by John struck a chord with listeners. The video has now grown to over 700k views on YouTube at the time of this recording. He released two more songs under his new name called Reflex and his single Roses with the dark yet original video premiering on the fader. The song is now sitting at more than 5 million plays on SoundCloud. And then he got a call from Post Malone's team to open up for him on the West Coast run of his Hollywood Dreams tour. But he was basically the opener to the opener to the opener, so not that many people were at the shows seeing him perform. This team is super cool, he's super cool, it's easy. We get along so well because I think our philosophies are similar. We just wanna make cool shit. And while his solo artistry was starting to bubble, his songwriting run continued, appearing as a credited writer for Jadena's album The Chief in 2017, as well as writing the song Can't Wait for Division's 2017 album Morning After. He credits his songwriting experiences as a confidence booster saying, they taught me that I was good enough. Imagine you're standing next to a hero of yours, someone you've been admiring for two decades or a decade or 10 days or five minutes, and you're there because of something that you crafted for yourself. It tells you that you deserve to be in the room. He also performed at some festivals, including Rolling Loud, where he made waves for his live performance abilities. Two years after opening for Post at certain venues, he was headlining his own tour at some of those same rooms. His debut album, Collection One, dropped in March of 2018, and prior to the album dropping, his streaming numbers had reached 50 million streams combined on all digital platforms. He was also hired by Gucci as a model for their Guilty campaign. And you're right, I am guilty of giving you the answer to the question from the beginning of the video. But his modeling career was short-lived and he decided he had already done enough to complete other people's visions. It was time to focus solely on his own. He accumulated over 150 million streams on all platforms combined and ended up signing a partnership deal with LA Reid's hit co records. And more recently, Kareem Biggs Burke would make his return to the music business after close to a 15 year hiatus just to sign St. John to a management deal off of a pure belief in his talent alone. 
Biggs was previously a staple in the Rockefeller dynasty with Jay-Z and Dame Dash, selling more than 60 million albums combined and executive producing all of Jay's albums up until the Black Album, before selling his shares and leaving the company. He said that he had lost his passion for music and while he was glad they created history, he wasn't trying to recreate it. All of that changed when Biggs heard St. John's music. Rock Nation co-founder Tyron Smith had played a snippet for him of John's album, and after driving home listening to Collection One, he immediately connected. Biggs and John became friends after meeting at a fashion show, and after playing some more new music for him, Biggs was convinced. Biggs told Billboard, speaking on St. John, he will be the next biggest artist and brand in the world. As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see, because this is before they were famous. Let me know who to cover next in the comments down below. As always, follow me on Instagram at Jeremy underscore Hecht. Dream good, live better. I hope you have one heck of a day, and I'll see you in the next video.